Hello and welcome once again to White Lotus of Light conversational series. I am thrilled and happy to have my dear friend um, and a phenomenally skilled and talented psychic, uh, Juliana Cabrera. Um, how are you doing today, Juliana? Great. How about you? I am doing fantastic. Super excited. I was actually going to have Julian years ago, but she lucked out and I messed up that episode. And now she's on now when I have like literally a hundred times the subscribers because uh, Juliana, Juliana and I have been friends uh, since uh, 2021. Is that right? Three years now? God, it seems 2020. like 2020. Oh, okay. Even so four years. Yeah. And it just happens to be the four longest years of our lives, I'm sure. So I feel like it's like we met, you know, in middle school for how many lives I've been through since then. So uh, Juliana is a QHHT practitioner, more on that later, channeler, Reiki practitioner, psychic medium, and intuitive counselor. Her journey as a healer began roughly six years ago when she picked up her first book on Wicca. This sparked her interest in the divine, leading her to experience the world in a magical way she hadn't known as possible. From there, she did everything she could to strengthen her connection with spirit, which is profound, I might add. Her first experience with an angel came while she was working in Mount Hood National Forest, and a voice came to her stating the name Ezekiel. From then on, she tried to speak to the angel and eventually branched off to be able to speak with all types of beings of light and becoming a clear channel for spirit. After she was able to speak directly to angels and other light beings, she knew she had to keep going and continuing learning different modalities. She eventually took the QHHT course and got her Reiki attunements, which strengthened her connection tenfold. She now has a business named Divine Timing Metaphysical Services, and I'll have a link to all of uh, Juliana's resources down below. But uh, Juliana, like I remember... Uh, the four four years ago uh, when I ended up uh, getting a QHHT channel... Uh, uh, what would you call that? A QHHT appointment, I guess, session. That's the word I was looking for. Session with you. Uh, and it absolutely blew my mind. Um, and so uh, I'm just going to talk real quick in order to explain how QHHT works. It basically has to do with reincarnation, which is a very popular topic on the channel. And so in order to really understand reincarnation, you have to understand karma. And basically karma is the corrective mechanism of the universe that helps get your soul uh, on the right path for spiritual evolution. And that's going to look different for every soul. And so the principle of karma is essentially what you do in the world then has an impact on your soul's journey. How you respond to what's happening in the world, especially through actions, then sets up future principles, especially if you do things where you either are really in alignment with natural law, which can generate good karma, or if you do something really negative, which can generate bad karma. And karma can be experienced immediately. I uh, The other day, I startled someone by talking suddenly, and they screamed out, whoa! And like, I experienced instant karma. I had frightened her, and she instantly frightened me. Normally, however, karma uh, unfolds over multiple lifetimes, which brings us to reincarnation. So... After death, depending on when you are in a yuga cycle, you either will uh, be given a test to see if you've learned all the different lessons of the Kala Yuga, and that would involve going through first the Sun Gate, hence the bright light that everyone goes to, and then uh, Mercury Gate, uh, Venus Gate, Moon Gate, Jupiter or Mars Gate, Jupiter Gate, and eventually the apparently almost impossible to get past Saturn Gate. And if you haven't learned all the lessons of all those different planets and stripped away all uh, the karma that you came in to learn in this incarnation, if you didn't get it all right, then you go back. We're at the end of the call. You it's a little different this time. You'll be given a choice of whether or not you want to reincarnate in the next yuga or uh, reincarnate in another planet. So Juliana practices a technique called QHHT, which allows you to get in touch with those past lives. So can you explain to us, Juliana, what is QHHT? What does the acronym stand for? Where did you learn about it and what's your experience with it? 
Yeah, so QHHT stands for Quantum Healing Hypnosis Technique, and it is a form of past life regression hypnosis that was developed by the late Dolores Cannon. Um, She was an author and a hypnotist, um, and she wrote many books about her experiences with this um, technique. So basically, it works by me hypnotizing someone and putting them in the somnambulistic state, which is a trance-like state between like sleep and awake times. And basically, I um, regress you back and we go through different lifetimes, pretty much as many as you want, because you're never fully like what you would think as being hypnotized, just like in another world, you're always able to communicate with me and you're still like have tethers here to earth so you can speak. And then um, after we go through the lifetimes, we at the end of each lifetime, we take you through the death scene and then it relates back to some kind of lesson related to this lifetime. And once you're done looking through all the lifetimes you want, then we go into your subconscious mind and you come with a list of questions that you want me to ask your higher self on your behalf. Um, And it's really healing because not only do you get to learn about your past lives, but you get to learn um, more about yourself from yourself in this um, deep trance state. Yeah, that's awesome. And I talk also on this channel about how there is the the, uh, conscious mind. There's the subconscious mind, which Juliana was saying that she directs the questions to the individual subconscious mind. Then there's the collective unconscious, which includes things like the Akashic records and where this data is uh, stored. And then there's the universal mind. And so you'll notice that Juliana talks about putting putting you in a liminal state so you can access those other layers of mind within yourself, including your own reincarnation experience. And when I did it with Juliana, it was absolutely mind blowing. Um, (laughs) Some of the past lives I had were super ultra mega ancient. Like I had one after the fall of Lemuria, basically the beginning of the Kali Yuga that directly followed the golden age of Lemuria two cycles ago. It was absolutely insane and off the chain. It even had aliens and pyramids and like it was uh it was bizarre and intense and just whoa and it all came from me she didn't say anything she just like in, in, invoked me into this trance state and just all of a sudden there i was it was super visceral and, and just super intense i had another one where almost all my lives were human lives and i'm going to focus on one here in a second but i had another one where i was a uh, homo florensis those little hobbit people and juliana was also i knew juliana in that life as well and i saw uh, 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 a Numo people uh, come up out of the ocean, like a, one of those uh, uh, fish aliens that help direct evolution here on Earth. And then I had a very intense uh, experience of being one of the oracles at Delphi, again, along with Juliana, because we've had a lot of past lives together. I had a whole host of other ones that didn't have feature Juliana. I'm just mentioning the two that did. Um, and in that life, I was one of the oracles at Delphi, and something that came through in that about Alexander the Great visiting the oracle of Delphi that I did not know about, I was able to convert, confirm in a history book exactly that had happened. So that was in, insane, intense secondary confirmation. Um, and so uh, what about your experiences with QHHT? Like, uh, what have been some of the more, like, I don't know, intense experiences people have had with you. Yeah, I've had lots of experiences with clients who have been able to fact check um, their like their lives that they were going through and they had no clue like anything about. I think one of them was a female pirate or something. I forgot what the name of the exact person was, but I've had lifetimes for Genghis Khan and Alexander the Great, like you said, and just a whole load of people, just also random people throughout history as well. Um, And personally, I got into QHHT. I tried my first session and I had some very vivid, like, past life remembrance. One in specific that has always stuck with me was I was um, a Native American and I was running um, from some flying saucer type of beings or craft with my baby in my arms and they were shooting lasers and there's also like 
cowboys and they were um, shooting arrows at us. I ended up dropping my baby in this lifetime and getting really, really scared. And I knew that if I went back for my baby, I would die. So I just kept running and I felt so guilty. I inevitably ended up dying like by the lasers or the arrow. But when I found out that I could have vivid remembrance like that, I knew immediately I had to learn how I could facilitate this for other people. Yeah, no, that's wild. Um, by the way, the vast majority of the lives that I experienced when Juliana and I did this did not feature aliens, despite that we rattled off three that did. Um, I think <laughs> it might be because they're pretend, uh, particularly intense experiences. And also, um, I just had a life that was, uh, uh, what do you call that when it's at the same time, not coincidental, um, that was adjacent. Really? was adjacent to Alexander the Great. Like I was alive, a contemporary. I had a contemporary life to Alexander the Great that was as one of the women who were uh, the oracles at Delphi, apparently, um, which I did not know that until this uh, QHHT. And it actually makes a lot of sense. I also saw um, like kind of one of the famous lives I had, which I guess that's semi-famous, was, um, uh, <laughs> which also came up with this, I was apparently, um, and this makes so much sense to me, um, oh gosh, now I'm blanking on her name. She's in the Trojan War. Um, Cassandra. Uh, Cassandra was the psychic who kept warning people that uh, the, the Greeks were coming. The Greeks were coming and they were going to destroy Troy. So they locked her in a prison and she kept saying, you guys got to get ready. Like the, the Greeks are coming. The Greeks are coming. They didn't listen to her. And sure enough, the Greeks came and the Greeks like overran the city and she had tried to warn everyone. And some people then blamed her. And I was like, oh, my God, no wonder I have this feeling of nobody will listen to me so intensely so often in this life. Because a lot of stuff I talk about in this channel, I used to talk about a ton when I was younger, but people weren't ready to hear it. And so I had that feeling like Cassandra did of trying to warn people about some terrible fate and they couldn't do it. And so that was the one famous life I had. But I had a bunch of lives that were just quite... Um, normal that I also experienced uh but very always very emotionally powerful do you find that they're always like super emotionally charged uh um, lifetimes usually yeah definitely because every lifetime that you are brought through is chosen by your subconscious and deemed um very important because they're, they're lessons that not only made sense back then but also relate to this lifetime so being able to see those from your new perspective and your uh, life now is always usually healing. And then, you know, it just, there's a lot of emotions. Also, we take every lifetime through the death scene. So mm -hmm. that can always bring up a lot of emotions. But I will say going through the death scene may sound scary, but I am trained and there to coach people through those experiences. And I can also make it so you don't have to feel um, the intensity of what it, it was. So, yeah. yeah. And I find that, you know, one of the main things that people struggle with who are kind of like awakening uh, spiritually is that very often if they're like me um, and they have a lot of trauma that they need to really work through that trauma. And the thing is, is that certain kinds of trauma can carry over from one life into the next. And so with what Juliana's talking about there, sometimes healing like a traumatic death, like drowning is usually like one of the worst ones. Um, can make you feel more liberated and less anxious in this life. And people often say, well, what can we do about trauma? And I say, well, trauma from this life, I'm really good at helping people with. But trauma from past lives, which is sometimes the issue, is exactly one of the things that can be really healing from this technique uh, that Juliana has. So if you sense you have past life trauma, you can have that be one of your questions. And uh, Juliana is able to work on that because I definitely felt very healed and and sort of generally less traumatized because in at least one of those cases I was super traumatized in the way I died it's like super brutal and so um I felt like a lot of healing from that so I think that's really valuable so do can you, I add something please so um there are some people who come into the sessions not honestly being ready to um see the past life trauma so when i go to regress them instead of regressing back to past lives they will regress back to um certain traumatic events from this lifetime and i find that that is also equally um as healing and such a beautiful experience going through that replaying it and then um me 
coaching them to let it go or, you know, integrate it or whatever may need to be the case for that specific thing. So that's just another outcome that could happen. Mm, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, that's a, all those kind of things I think can be just so healing. And uh, especially when you're healing trauma, it just liberates so much energy for you to be able to do other things in your life. So mm -hmm. uh, something that Juliana and I have in common, except the difference is Juliana just can naturally do this. Um, I, as I often talk about on the channel, I can talk with the angels. I do angelic magic all the time. In fact, I helped uh, teach Juliana uh, the form of angelic magic that I teach. I gave her very minimal teaching and she just mostly learned it on her own. Um, and I'm actually going to teach Juliana archangelic magic because it seems that one of the keys to being able to work with the archangels is being able to heal the angels in the first place. And Juliana can just hear interdimensional beings. Um, even uh, she can get in contact with dead relatives. Um, she's just incredibly, incredibly psychic, like on the short list of like top three or four most incredibly psychic people I've ever met. And I've met a lot of people who were fairly psychic, but she's right up there with anyone. And I had to train myself to learn to hear them and also get got help from the angels, whereas Juliana just can naturally do it. And so um, do you want to talk about like um, your experience with the angels and with other beings and helping people connect with uh, relatives who have passed and that sort of thing? Sure. So hmm, where to begin? Because it's such a... Um... <laughs> a wide concept, but I guess I'll start with how I first started hearing. So when I was way younger, I would see like light beings and I would hear things, but my parents um, told me that I was mentally unwell. So I kind of repressed it. I was on multiple um, psychiatric medications, told that I had schizophrenia and all of these things. But I always knew that that wasn't true because I could feel them around me. Um, so when I was above 18, I just quit all the medicine and I just kind of went into a, a, a deeper dive with it, starting with like learning about Wicca and learning about different um, uh, deities and beings and stuff. And honestly, angels just came to me and I thought it was really funny because I kind of I uh, didn't want anything to do with them at first because I grew up Catholic and being Catholic, I was told that if I were to speak to, you know, entities, that that's the devil's work, whatever. Yep. So, Same. yeah. <laughs> so Ezekiel came to me first. Um, I asked him to, uh, his name just popped in my head. I thought it was crazy, but I asked him to give me um, a sign. And later that day, somebody walks into the shop I was working at with a, a shirt with big letters that said Ezekiel on it. And the more crazy thing was, a couple days after that, I was driving down the road and I was I had the radio on and the radio like glitched out. And then it was like a Christian station speaking about the angel Ezekiel. Like of all things, I stopped my car immediately and was just so shaken. And I was like, OK, this means I have to take a deeper look. And through the process of automatic writing and just meditation, I just naturally was able rapidly, naturally able to hear them more and more. So. Yeah. Yeah. And Juliana has given me tons of messages over the year that then have been confirmed by my own experience that have have come through the angels. And so, um, yeah, it's funny. I learned how to hear the angels after I met Juliana. Not Juliana didn't uh, teach me uh, more so that Juliana just showed me that it was possible. And I could feel the presence of the angel, but I couldn't hear what they were saying. And then when I did angelic magic, that's when that ability super duper unlocked for me was working, especially working my way up through the choirs. And so you also though, um, in addition to hearing angels, uh, and I know that you actually invoke the angels when you do certain kinds of work. And among that is we were talking before uh, the show about how one of the things that you do for people is um, you connect them with relatives who have passed. And even you, you said you even have helped certain um people who are souls that were trapped between the worlds help them move on to light do you want to talk about that a little bit definitely so psychic mediumship is something that developed through being able to hear the angels it honestly started when I was doing my QHHT practice with people, I would get random messages. So I just took a shot and I would be like, hey, so-and-so brings you a message of blah, blah, blah. And a lot of times I was getting these hits and I realized that this is another gift. 
So yes, I speak to deceased loved ones of people and it's just so special to me because, you know, a lot of times even after people passed, depending on how they passed, there's still energy there. And it's also ultimately very healing for the person who has lost them to just be able to connect and hear and get confirmation of things that I shouldn't know about their people. Um, and as far as like helping people who might be stuck in the in-between, I have noticed that a lot of times when the um, person had a traumatic death or even like suicide, um, that's when they tend to be stuck or if they had a lot of like depression and sadness in this life. So I call on Archangel Azrael um, and he helps me to shepherd them into the light if they are ready. So mm, that's awesome. And then uh, but you you also like have you also have uh, connected people with people who are past but are not stuck, right? Like people who are in the heavenly realms or awaiting reincarnation or what have you. Definitely. Yeah, that's um, another thing. And it can happen through like, so sometimes people will come to my sessions with specific names of people. All they have to do is really just give me their name and I can kind of just put myself into this trance-like state and I connect with them. Um, or they'll just be like, just I want to see what you've got. And then I just let the information flow through and then we get hits and find out who is coming through and trying to talk with them. Yeah, that is awesome. Um, and you also recently started uh, doing angelic magic. And uh, I'm curious your thoughts about that. And just real quick, I'm just going to say that I am teaching a summer angelic magic class for Australia, Oceania, for the EU and UK. People have been asking for both of those. This is the opportunity. And then uh, for a East Coast friendly start time uh, for U.S. class as well. So if you're interested in that, just go to whitelotusalight.com consultations and sign up for the class. Uh, Juliana, what's been your experience? You've, you've worked with the, basically the, the same ritual that I work with, with angelic magic. What's been your experience of that, especially that you can hear the angels? It must be really gratifying. Yes. So um, the angels that are from that book are different than the archangels and before um i was just speaking with the archangels so it was different these are like the everyday angels and right. they're closer in vibration to us so honestly it felt like i was closer to them um and i remember when you sent me the book in the mail i felt i opened it and immediately just got full body chills and that's like spirit's way of telling me pay attention this is real like this is something for you and I immediately started working up my ritual and I got pretty obsessed with it for a while. It like the way that the magic worked was just so synchronistic, so in alignment with what I was looking for and wanting. I just I love it so much. So yeah, that's awesome. Um, and so uh, another, another thing we were talking about before the show is um divination you know uh one of the main things i do is i do astrology uh mostly like astrological concierge work for vip you know kind of clients people who are like managing a business who want some astrological insights and how i do that is i do both their natal chart and their novamsa chart and the reason the the way that astrology works and it's the same with with all divinatory arts, which are which I would say broadly fall on the ast under the astrological eighth house, whereas what Juliana was just talking about with both the QHHT, which puts you into that uh, state where you're you're almost uh, in a hypnagogic sleep kind of state, that liminal state between two, two different things, and then also contact with um, especially uh, the deceased. That would fall under what's called the 12th house in uh, Vedic astrology because it has to do with being outside of your body. But divination is looking at fractals that appear in the material uh, in the material universe, uh, which could be the stars at the moment of your birth when you took your first breath, right? Or where the stars are in the heavens right now, or tarot cards, or oracle cards, or um, I Ching, looking at which of the um, I Ching symbols you get in a given moment or or the classic reading the tea leaves it's an actual real thing and what it is is that you use whatever tool you're using and you look at the symbolism of that tool to evaluate that fractal and because the universe is fractal in nature and in particular time is fractal in nature you can actually make predictions about the future by looking at a fractal in this moment that actually extends in time into the future 
And so if you correctly evaluate that fractal, you can then divine the future. Now, Gerald Salente does this from a totally dead materialist point of view with money and money management stuff and what's going to happen politically. But you can also do things like tarot cards or oracle cards. And I've had, um, Juliana has given me some amazing, incredible readings in the past uh, with oracle cards that were just spot on because she really understands how to look at that vibration of the moment and interpret it. And so what what made you start getting into divination and in particular oracle cards? Um, I just wanted another way to be able to express my spirituality and share more of my gifts in a different way. It was It's kind of like a fun thing when I don't want to just go straight from the mental and the divine, just having like a physical card there with pictures. And I like to be analytical sometimes. And like you were saying, look at the symbolism and try to ask the guides how this relates to someone's life or where they're going or what they're doing. Yeah. And it's just that... Uh that fractal uh, is really powerful if you know how to interpret it right. And I have found that um, your your Oracle cards, do you, do you happen to have them handy? I didn't ask you to have them beforehand. Um, They're upstairs. They're upstairs. I can... Okay, well, I tell you what, do you want to grab it so you can just show a couple or maybe just do a reading? Just yeah, a sure. Reading? Okay, I'm going to pause it. Cool. Okay, so Juliana's back and she has her awesome Oracle cards. And here's what I was thinking. So the universe is fractal in nature, which means whenever someone watches this show, the fractal of this moment is applying in their life and therefore would also apply in the future. And so Juliana, did you want to do like, I don't know what the right amount of cards is, three a three card pool for just a message to the audience about sure. what they can do in their life, maybe something like that? Definitely. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to get quiet for a second and yeah, take um, connect. Yeah. Okay. So first one, love that healing energy. Can you put it up so, to the camera a bit more? Yeah. Healing energy. Oh, that's awesome. What number is it? 20? It is. Yeah, 20. Healing so energy. I'm going to pull all three and then I'll talk about them. Yeah. Forgiveness. Wow, I love it. <laughs> right. I'm getting the tingles as I'm uh, shuffling these cards. That's good. And masculine energy. Masculine energy. Interesting. Okay, so I'm going to talk about them as if I'm just talking to a person. Sure. So healing energy this is very significant for lots of people right now and just the collective in general we're all healing there's so much trauma and sadness and heaviness in the world right now and i think this is just a message from spirit that we are we're in the process of changing that by healing and the way that we're getting to that healing is through forgiveness um among other things you know but forgiveness is so so important the energy of forgiveness is like Ah, taking a load off because when we're able to forgive others and ourselves, we can truly be in alignment and be open to love and all of the other higher vibrational emotions and energies in this world. And then the last one, masculine energy. I think that's really funny. So the energy of the masculine is go for it, for force it, just like take action. And I think that now... I think the energy of healing and forgiveness is kind of more on the feminine side. So I think it's looking at the duality of like having balance of both, but also understanding that we don't need to be taking so much action. We can align with these things by being gentle with ourselves, because I feel like the overwhelming amount of masculine energy right now is just so forceful and just like heavy, because when I think of it, it just feels really heavy. But the energy of healing and forgiveness is just soft. So, yeah. I like that. Can I can I, uh, do a couple of comments on those cards? Sure. Yeah. Um, obviously, healing energy, always great. It's always a great time to heal. If you have healing to do, which basically everyone do, does, it's that Robert Anton Wilson quote that we're all among the walking wounded, that pretty much everyone you 
encounter has been varying degrees of wounded to tremendously wounded and traumatized by just by virtue of being in the Koa Yuga. And so having that compassion, remembering that is important. And then with forgiveness, you know, you don't forgive others to let them off the hook. You forgive others to let yourself off the hook of that you don't have to be holding that hurt, that anger, that rage, that sadness. You don't have to carry that anymore. It can be hard and you shouldn't force yourself to do that. You know, like uh, also uh, forgiving someone does not mean that you don't have healthy boundaries and you don't maybe cut people out of your life who you've forgiven. You, I forgive them, but I don't want to talk to them ever again because they're just a toxic person, whatever, right? And that also extends to like, look at this unforgivable thing that's happened in our world with the events of the past few years, you know, and especially this thing and how it's impacted so many families and will continue to impact people for years to come. We need to be able to forgive ourselves and them for um, if we made that choice for ourselves or they made that choice for themselves or whatever, uh, or they felt like they had no choice, right? We need to forgive the people who were reasonable people who were in school administrators and under tremendous pressure and had to push something through. Sure, we can at the same time applaud the courage of the people who pushed back on this uh, as teachers and maybe left their job or as medical professionals and spoke out against all odds. We should lionize those people, but recently I've seen people start to say that we need to be blaming the victims, the end victims of this, because they applied a lot of social pressure on those of us who chose not to take that. And so you can forgive people and still hold people accountable, especially in the case of criminal culpability, people at the top, they can still be, we can forgive their higher self or their soul and hold their lower self accountable to what they've done. And the same thing can be true in our personal life. But a lot of times it's not worth it to try and hold someone in our personal life accountable. Instead, the best thing we can do to get the relief and healing we want is to forgive them. That's where the real healing happens. Someone doing what you want or saying what you want, that may or not, may not bring healing. I can give you a concrete example. My father, when he passed, by the time he died, he told me everything I'd ever wanted him to say everything. And it was like he was pouring water into the middle of the Sahara Desert. It just didn't do anything. Because I needed to hear that 20 years earlier, whatever, 18 years earlier before he was saying those things to me. And what does that mean? That means that at some point, we have to move out of being a victimized person and into a survivor. And we do that by taking accountability for our life. And one way to do that, that's counterintuitive, is to forgive these people who have abused us. That doesn't mean that you don't uh, cut them out of your life or whatever. I had the worst possible things happen to me. And I have forgiven the people by and large. Um, I, it, it's also a process. It's not an all at once thing. You know, it takes time. But at first there has to be a willingness to forgive. But what I'm telling you is, is that Forgiving them doesn't let them off the hook so much as it heals within you whatever's holding you down and holding you back. Um, and then I want to say that um, the, both of those things, like you say, are, are beautiful expressions of the divine feminine. And I think it's a testament to how much brutal, dark masculine energy is flowing around the planet that masculine energy just is automatically associated with it because that's the majority of the masculine energy we experience in the world. But I want to say to especially the men watching this, maybe for women, it's stop being in your masculine energy, just like Juliana said. But maybe for men, it's start being in your divine masculine. Start protecting the innocent. Start holding people accountable. Start being a guardian. Start being a provider uh, start being someone who's inventing and adding value to the world, do take action. I think for a lot of women have been forced into survival mode to become more masculine, and it's unhealthy. The flip side of the coin is for a lot of men, a big part of healing is stepping into divine masculine and rejecting the false dichotomy of either being a dark feminine beta male dude or... I'm an alpha male, Andrew Tate. Blame the victim. You know, I'm getting all the ladies I want and all the money and the Lambos, blah, blah, blah. Red pill yourself, bro. It's a false dichotomy. We need to look at 
figures like Aragorn from Lord of the Rings is like one of my classic examples of a divine masculine. He's super humble and yet badass. He's able to be loving and gentle with Arwen. And then he's a total badass out there kicking ass and doing things out of duty and as a protector and protecting the innocent and protecting the hobbits, which in many ways are a metaphor for innocence. So um, I think that... Uh, those are really powerful cards whenever anyone sees this. I see you I, want to pull more. Oh, yes. But um, something came through while you were speaking. So I heard that um, a large amount of the um, masculine collective hold a lot of shame and guilt in their hearts. Oh. And um, so this forgiveness needs to start in here mm -hmm. and not be holding on to that while they're trying to forgive other people. Because if we can't forgive ourselves, then we can not at all even start to forgive others. So. Yes. And also forgive yourself, men, for not being in the divine masculine. And forgive yourself, women, for if you felt that you were forced into masculinity when you wanted to be soft and receptive. And this world ended up making it so, uh, you know, we, we've, we've split the family and the sexes so much that it's forced men to, to some degree to become feminine and women definitely to become more masculine than they needed to be in prior eras. And so um, that's got everything out of balance. The nice thing is, is by destabilizing all this stuff, now we can really go, we reject all those false paradigm of dark feminine only fans, dark masculine, Allie McBeal, ruthless Hillary Clinton, stabbing backs on your way to the top for women, and instead divine feminine. And for men, rejecting this beta male, loser sucking up to girls but not being man enough to state your interests kind of crap um you know and 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 uh just being weak generally weak and compliant or i can i'm the controller i'm the dominator i'm the tyrant look how muscly i am red pill yourself bro andrew t it all day dark masculine bullshit and instead step into that divine masculine Exactly. And something else um, that comes up is maybe people watching will be like, well, how can I do that? And so a good place to start is, yes, by the forgiveness, but also by getting into our heart. Where we place our energy or where we place our attention is where our energy is placed. So if we can be in sync with our heart, we can start to amplify the energy of love and spreading that with other people. It just it's beautiful to do it that way. And that's how we can become more aligned with, you know, the divine masculine and feminine. Because we are meant to be a heart-based, a love-based people, you know. We've just been pushed away from that through lots of things. So I, I got a I got a question for you. What about um either uh yeah, what about uh, events to come? I don't know if you feel comfortable with this. Do you feel comfortable doing a, a poll for like the rest of the year for the United States? Because it's going to come out probably around June 1st or thereabouts. So it'd be. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Let's do that. We're about the halfway mark. Okay. So for the rest of the year, I mean, do you have, do you just want that to be the question or? Well, I don't know. I mean, I'm just saying like something. I'm trying to think of some kind of macro picture. You could even do planetary, like what are the spiritual lessons for the uh, the coming year? Um, what do we need to focus on for the coming six months, right? There was sort of an individualized, that felt like, even though it's three cards and it's for a broad audience, I bet those three cards really hit home for pretty much everyone. Like, I think there's something in it for everyone. Yeah. I would love to see something that, is uh, inclusive but more like macro focus does that make sense so yeah, like next six months uh what's going to unfold for the u.s or spiritual lessons something like that what what do you think what how, what, what do you feel um so what information um can spirit give us about the energies to come within the six, next six months like what would be good for us to be aware of or look out for yeah i feel like that's a good way to say it yeah um and for some reason the number four came out with that one so i'm just gonna do four for that and then the sun is shining like way brighter all of a sudden <laughs> you saw that. okay creativity 
Mm. So creativity, all about working with each other um, and leaning on each other during these times. I feel like our society is so separated and like everybody just like stay in your own lane, take care of yourself and just your little group here. I think it would be amazing if we could all like look in the bigger picture and know that we should all be taking care of each other to some degree and leaning on each other more and getting creative with ways that we can change what we don't like in our world. And I'm not talking about just voting or like the government. I'm talking about getting personal with your friends and your community and doing things that won't only affect you, but on a grander scale. And I don't know particularly what that would be, but get creative and figure it out. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then let's see. Growth. So lots of growth to come. Um, the story of this card is all about reaping what you sow, um, planting seeds uh, for for growth and change, and by getting creative and just by, you know, all the changes that are rapidly um, occurring in our world, we are just meant to grow, um, and we can either, you know, go with it and um, just, like, be like a fish flowing down the river or we could treat be like going upstream or something and be fighting against it. It always is easier um, if we just go with it and allow it to be taking us. I'm reading this book called The Power of Intention and he has, um, his name is Dr. Dwayne or Wayne Dyer, excuse me. And he talks about this metaphor of like getting on a little trolley and seeing a trolley strap that you can't reach. So you just imagine yourself being lifted up to grab it and just being taken with it rather than just like suffering or, you know, not going with it. Mm -hmm. The last one or the next one is self-love. So mm -hmm. like I was saying, everything starts with us. Our outer world is a reflection of our inner world. So learning to love ourselves the way we want to be loved, the way that we want to love others is a really big one. And not just telling yourself that you're going to love yourself, really feeling what that would feel like to love yourself. Yeah. Because I don't think change happens by just saying an affirmation, a positive affirmation. I will feel better. I will feel better. We actually have to get into that emotion and feel what it would feel like to be better. And I think that's really where the change happens. Mm. And then the last one. Truth. Mm. I love that. <laughs> Um, there's so much deception in our world and our society. Just be looking out for truth, not just taking what other people say, but doing your own research and above doing your own research, sitting with it and feeling what it feels like in your heart. And that's where the real truth is. So, yeah, those are. On that, can I see those cards again? Yeah. So I'll do two at a time. We have growth and creativity. Mm -hmm. Creative, creativity, growth. And then self-love. Uh -huh. I love it. Yeah, I I see that as those are all, um, you know, people ask me a lot on the channel because they talk about the whole shadow war things with the with the Lucy's and the Molly's, as I call them. And just sort of like that we're witnesses to history and there's a lot going on. And people are always like, well, what what can you do? And I always tell them that the first thing to do is get your own house right. And increasingly that's, the most important thing, yes, you should have food and water and point and click to defend yourself, all that kind of stuff, medicine if you need it, if you want to invest, there's gold and silver and crypto and all that stuff, but at least as important as those things, and I would say ultimately more important than those things, is getting your internal house in order, and developing true self-love is a huge, huge part of that. And then that creativity comes out in your own gifts, whatever those look like. Mm -hmm. Once you remove trauma, once you heal trauma, once you start to develop self-love, once you practice forgiveness, then you can start to realize, wow, I have all this talent. It's just a whole the whole te trying to teach a fish to ride a bicycle thing. Our entire world has been set up for Malachian control for 6,000 years. This is the end result of that. We're now moving away from that in a different direction. You know, the Luciferian arc, but also most high people are now claiming our space. And so it's going to it's going to look different. Uh, and that's where the creativity comes in is figuring out what it is that you do well. And if you don't do anything well, reach way deep back in your memory banks and think about things that used to really excite you and grab your attention. Maybe it's 15, 20 years ago. 
I bet you that would show up in your astrology chart as a strength of yours. And I bet you just thought, well, it's bullshit because I can't make money off it. Well, first of all, you may or may not want to take your talent and turn it into something that you monetize. The main thing you want to do with your talents is share them with the world, whatever that looks like, whether it's art or music or dance or writing or uh you want to build a better mousetrap, right? You're an engineer and you want to do some engineering thing that isn't some dumb thing that corporate told you to do, but it's something you'd spend banging around in your head and that you just haven't done it because you're like, oh, I can't monetize it or I don't want, want to monetize it or whatever. Go ahead and invent that thing and maybe release it public domain. There's so many different talents that everyone has some kind of talent. Like, I, I really believe that basically everybody has some kind of talent. It's just a matter of ex expressing that. And for a lot of people, before you can express your talents, you need to do that healing and self-love stuff. And so, Juliana, um, you know, I think that we've covered a lot of ground here. And, um, man, I, I know uh, just how insanely psychic you are and how gifted you are. And so I will just tell all the people on my channel that Juliana is on the short list as like tied with all the most psychic people I've ever met in my entire life. And it really comes through in her offerings. And so Juliana, where can people find you so they can uh, reach out to you and either get a QHHT, past life regression, <laughs> mind boggling experience, or if they just uh, want to speak with a deceased loved one or if they want to um you know just get some advice and spiritual counseling in the form of your divination uh where can they find you yeah so i have a website um and you have all that information so you'll link it um somewhere but my website is www.in slash divine slash timing.com. I also am on Instagram and Facebook. Um, on Instagram, I go by in underscore divine underscore timing. Um, yeah, and I do free consultations um, where we can talk about what services um, are good for you. Um, and my services that I'm offering right now are Reiki, um, the QHHT, and psychic mediumship and um what else the oracle cards oh yeah and the oracle cards thank you <laughs> yeah. yeah well fantastic yeah i i especially like um i love everything uh juliana does uh but the the qhht experience is just like for me it was such a powerful like i get chills when i just think about it, it was so powerful and so vivid um do do uh do bring a, a seatbelt with you because you might want to strap in beforehand because that can be pretty pretty incredible. I mean, because for me it was like super visceral. It wasn't just like, hey, I'm seeing some images. It was like I was there. It was like, whoa, <laughs> super intense and really amazing. Um, so yeah, well, thank you so much for coming on, Juliana. I'll have to have you on again in the future. Um and yeah, check her out. And if you're also, if you're interested in angelic magic classes, I am uh, having that for July 11th for uh, wherever you live, it's July 11th. That's actually important to the class, the day of Jupiter, Thursdays, uh, for the UK and EU uh, and Australia time zones, Australia, Oceania, Asia time zones, and also one that's uh, East Coast friendly. It'll be starting at 730 p.m. east coast time uh doing a little bit earlier in the day for those east coasters so thank you so much juliana for coming on thank and you. everyone if you got this far and you enjoyed the video please hit like and subscribe and check out juliana's website all right have a great day bye